Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel for today's video. Not a very positive video. I don't like doing videos like these, but we are gonna talk about the worst products of 2020. So if you wanna see the products that your girl did not like, then just keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So that means I tried a lot of makeup this year and some things turned out great and then some things did not turn out so great. And as always with these worst of the videos, please take them with a grain of salt. What does not work for me doesn't mean it's not going to work for you and vice versa. We all have different skin. We all have different ways of applying things we all have different preferences so that is why a lot of these things actually I know a lot of you guys like but I just don't like them so let's just get into it don't take offense to anything it's all fun and games here so we'll start off with foundation I have two foundations that I tried this year that did not work out for me so the first one is the Milani screen queen natural finish foundation so this was marketed almost as like not a tinted moisturizer but it's very very lightweight it has a digital blue light filter whatever that means anyways I did not like this foundation I felt like the coverage was uneven I felt like it clung to dry patches and overall I just didn't like the way that it looked on my skin the positive to it was that it was lightweight so from afar I did feel like my skin looked really good and when I wore this foundation I did get compliments but up close I felt like it looked like a hot mess and the reviews on this were iffy some people liked it some people didn't like it I definitely didn't like it it did not work out for me and the way that it wore it broke up just very unflattering was not a fan of this one the next one is from Dior unfortunately because Dior has my all-time favorite foundation the air flash foundation but their forever summer skin was a big fail for me probably one of the biggest fails if I'm being completely honest it was a wreck of a release what was interesting about this release is that it was a limited edition product which turns out to be a good thing because <laughs> it wasn't very good so this oxidizes like crazy there was something where you ordered a color and they would send you a different color I ordered this from Selfridges and everybody was getting a different color than they ordered something about them changing the actual color that you got and this is a shade light and this is definitely <laughs> for a medium skin tone I have never come across a product that oxidizes quite like this so as far as the whole shade situation this was just not good I think it wore okay like it was tolerable but the oxidation the color shades on this were just awful and there were some shady things going on behind the scenes was not feeling that and let's move on to concealers so the first one this wasn't a new release but it was something that I tried this year this is the Catrice one drop coverage weightless concealer I feel like a lot of times I'm able to make products work for me. Even if I don't necessarily love the product, I tend to be pretty good at manipulating products to look decent. Like even with these foundations, even though I complain, I still will wear them from time to time because I know how to make them work. This concealer is awful. It's so drying, but so thin. It doesn't give any coverage. It's very, very light, and it just looks so dry. It sinks into fine lines, and the best way to use this is to use literally one drop, hence the name one drop coverage, I suppose, but it looks dry and it breaks up under my eyes. It sinks into those fine lines. And as somebody who has dry skin, this for some reason, it did not work out for me. I didn't like it. The next one is also not a new release. I bought this when it first came out and I tried to convince myself I liked it because so many people liked it. And this year I used it a lot and I still just don't like it. So I do want to talk about the Fenty Beauty Concealer. This is one of those products where I'm going to be on the outside. It doesn't work for me. It really breaks up and crepes underneath my eyes. It shows texture that I swear isn't there and nothing. It just, it makes me look 10 years older. You know, I have a baby face. I'm 24. I do have some fine lines going on, but this makes me look 
old. I do not like the way that this makes my under eyes look. It doesn't blend into the skin. It sits on top of the skin. So I actually wore this yesterday and I've worn it numerous times over the year just trying to make it work for me just like it works for everybody else. But I do not like this. No. The next product, I don't even know what this is considered, but this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Infini Infinity <laughs> Infinity Powder. And this is a hybrid formula between a couple of their very, very popular powder formulas. I just, I don't understand this product. I don't even know that it's bad. It's just that it's, it's so pricey and I don't really... It's awkward. Like, I don't know if this is supposed to be a highlighter. I don't know if this is supposed to be a setting powder because when I set with this, it's too shiny and it emphasizes texture. But when I use this as a highlighter, it's not highlighty enough. It almost looks like it should be a setting powder. I personally just feel like it's way too expensive for me not even being sure how to use this. I've tried to use it multiple times. I just, I don't like the effect that it gives and I just can't seem to find a good purpose for it. So if you have any ideas and your skin tone is similar to mine, let me know how you use this. Let's move on to highlighters. I have two different formulas that did not hit the jackpot for me. So the first one is unfortunately the Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer and Mesmerize. And I was really excited about this. Typically speaking, liquid highlighters, they just don't work out for me ever. So the fact that this didn't work out for me wasn't a surprise. Surprise. But when I swatched it, I, I was I was hopeful because I thought it looked like a gorgeous liquid luminizer and it was gonna be so pretty. And by the way, do you see how bad this is oxidizing? This on my skin? No, thank you. But this seems to just completely disappear. Now I'm used to liquid luminizers breaking up my foundation. This one, I can't even find it. It just, it looks so shiny when you swatch it, but it completely disappears on the skin. I haven't had a liquid luminizer that works like this. It was just, <laughs> The next highlighter formula, and honestly, I can just go for this whole collection. It was really bad. <laughs> These are the Milani Luminous Lights highlighters. Now, this was for their Coachella collection this year, and ooh, baby, these highlighters are not good. I feel bad. These were gifted to me, but this whole collection, I just didn't like anything from it. I didn't care for the eye toppers. Those were probably the best part of the collection. Their lip glosses were weird colors, too. I don't know. This, as a highlighter, it's so so flaky it doesn't stick to the skin at all it's really really chunky and you know what I think there is a time and a place for highlighters like this like Coachella you'd literally get glitter on your face it, it goes everywhere and you can look a mess at Coachella if it's glitter all over your face I think that's fine but I just it's bad quality I don't like it it's way 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 too chunky you can use it on your eyelid but again you need a glitter glue otherwise you're gonna have glitter all over your face so I did not like those. I have one eyebrow product that left me less than pleased and it's another Rare Beauty product. This is the Brow Harmony. Now I really 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 enjoy the brow gel side. If I can open it up. The brow gel? Really good. I wish they sold this independently because I do not like this brow pencil. It is much too pigmented. It is much too creamy. I feel like it gets all over my skin. I don't like the tip. I think the tip's a little bit too thick, but I can get over that. That's just a preference thing. It's just so creamy and pigmented. I feel like it doesn't dry down. So this color is a bit darker for me than what I normally prefer, but normally it's fine. I can get away with it. This, whenever I brush it out and try to blend it out because it did apply so dark and pigmented, it gets all over my skin outside of my eyebrows because it's too creamy and it doesn't dry down. So I avoid the pencil side at all costs. I don't like it. I have three eyeliners for you. I tried out a lot, a lot, a lot of eyeliners. These three were weird. <laughs> So the first one, this was on a trying on video. This is from the brand Silly George. It's Liner Bond. So it's supposed to be one of those products where it's eyeliner and then it's also supposed to be sticky so you can stick your eyelash right on top, which is a bit gimmicky, but I don't know if you guys can see. It's like not black at all. You can see my skin through it. Not only is it see-through so it's not black, but the eyelashes don't even stick 
to this. It's horrific. It's not, no, okay. The next one, unfortunately, are these Milani Fruit Fetish Eyeliners. I have a couple other colors. I've tried to make this work for me and I keep them around because I don't have liquid liners like these colors, but the quality itself of these liquid liners just aren't very good. They are crack city, so you have to be careful not to apply it too much and go over it too many times or it'll flake everywhere. It gets cracky. The actual line that you get, it's not as nice, smooth, clean, pigmented line. So you do have to go back and rebuild and that's when it gets crackly. So I really wanted to like these because they were really cool colors. I don't play with liquid liner like that, but they aren't that great quality. I feel bad because Milani was kind of hit or miss this year. I either love the products they came out with or I really dislike them and not a fan of this one. Last eyeliner, because I was on a mission to test eyeliner. The e.l.f. I don't even know what this is. Just the black liquid liner, the one that comes in this packaging. Horrible, horrible. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people love this, but for me, it is so watery, you guys. I mean, I don't have aged eyelids, and it still like gets into the little fine lines and just like swims down them like rivers. It's so watery, and it's not very black, so you have to keep reapplying the product, which again makes it swim around. Like you can even see on my hands, like down here, it's swimming into the those little creases in my hands. It's just, no, I have zero control with this product. I have one lip product. We don't have a lot of lip products because I didn't wear a lot of <laughs> lip products this year, but this set really disappointed me because I spent a lot of money on it. And this was the Scott Barnes lip glosses. And this is the only formulation that Scott Barnes has come out with that I didn't like. I just don't like his lip glosses. And this set in particular has three clear lip glosses. So first of all, all of the lip gloss brushes are all kind of messed up and have gone everywhere. That happens sometimes with lip glosses. Not that big of a deal. But that's kind of the first sign to where I was like... You know, I paid a lot of money for this. All of the lip gloss hairs are all over the place. And let me swatch these for you. Now the packaging is really, really pretty, but I was just overall disappointed because they're three completely sheer colors. They look sheer on the lips and the formula itself isn't that great either. Like they all look like that on the lips. The glitter feels a little bit gritty to me. It's not a very good consistency. I don't know, and it's not very shiny either. So yeah, this was not a very good lip gloss set. Now a lip gloss is a lip gloss, but I was just more so disappointed in these because I was really excited to try out his lip gloss formula because he does have really good formulas. I paid a lot of money for three literally clear lip glosses. All right, we're on to the final category, which I know is the one you guys have been waiting on, and that is eyeshadow palettes. Now, eyeshadows, I would say of all the products, eyeshadow is the product that I am able to manipulate and really make work for me. I'm very, let me brag here, I'm pretty good at just understanding formulas and understanding how to make them work. So these are the ones where I just, mm. so we'll start off with one that I return. And I think nobody likes this palette. So this is the Millennial Pinks palette from Melt. The shadows were just so powdery. It wouldn't stay on the eyelid and it was overall just a very bad formula. The mess I created with this palette was crazy. The look was awful. So it was a shame because the colors in this palette were really pretty, but I just could not get that formula to work. And it, I don't really like Melt's formula in general. I find them to be quite inconsistent. And the only formulation that I've liked from e.l.f., from e.l.f., from Melt was the She's in Parties palette. But then I didn't like the color story of that. So I can't completely win with Melt. A few more palettes. So these first ones, this one's more so disappointment for me because so many people love these palettes, but I just don't love the formula of the Sigma eyeshadow palettes. And I'm on the outside of this, so don't not get them because of me, but I warned you, okay? <laughs> so the first one is the Enchanted palette, which is stunning. I actually wore this recently, but every time I seem to have to use 
this palette. I feel like it takes so much effort. The mattes don't blend, the shimmers fall all over the face, or they are lackluster. I do really like these glittery ones, but you have to use a glitter glue with them. Same thing with the Corderosa. I felt like the mattes kind of disappeared on the eyes. I just really have problems with this palette. And it's shame because I really, really love the color story of these and so many people love these palettes but i cannot get them to work for me i don't know why well my, i am able to get them to work for me because they are pretty and i still use them because they're really pretty but the experience is just not very good it's always a little bit of extra work the next one it just gets more disappointing <laughs> with each time i pick it up is the shantikai safari eye trio now my original review i didn't recommend it i wasn't in love with it it wasn't worth the money, but I continued to use it thereafter because the shadows were okay. They were great for washes of color. But at the end of the day, I paid like $70 for this palette. It's three shades. As you can see, one has had an uh-oh in the last video that I talked about. It's three shades of a basic satin taupe that has no pigmentation, a basic copper shade that has not a lot of pigmentation, and a gold shade. So I just feel like it was a lot of money for shadows that don't have much pigmentation. And and they're just not that special of colors. And there's a time and a place for eyeshadows that can give you a nice wash all over the lid, which I do think these can do. But this by no means justified the price and it broke. One of the three eyeshadows broke because the formula is way too soft. I'm starting to get a little bit passionate with these explanations because y'all know how I feel about my eyeshadow palette. So this next one, I feel bad, but I did not have a very good experience with the Pure and Raw Beauty Christie palette. Now, completely made up for because her ColourPop palette is really, really good. Everything from the design to the color story just never spoke to me. Like the idea of this double-sided palette, I guess is cool, but I kind of just like having them all laid out in a flat palette, but that's personal. Continuing on, <sighs> I don't like these colors. I think these colors are not very pretty. They're too vibrant, in my opinion. And then the neutral side's really pretty, but apart from that, the quality's not even good either. For me, I felt like I wasn't able to make this work. I even used the all neutral side to create a look because I wasn't a fan of the all colorful side when I used it. I thought the masks were hard to work with, but I was giving them the benefit of the doubt because these are hard colors to formulate. So I was like, all right, this will kind of seal up the deal for me because neutral colors, they're easier to formulate. So I did an all neutral look and it still was so much effort to create a look. The mattes just wouldn't blend. The only good shade in this palette is the shimmer. The shimmer is great, but their matte formula is not good. And all of this palette is matte. So I did not like that. It just wasn't a good palette across the board for me. The next one is another popular one. So <laughs> this is the Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette. Personally, I just, I just don't get the hype. I feel like this is a very inconsistent palette. The mattes themselves wouldn't blend for me. They were patchy. And the shimmers, there's like two or three that are really pretty. The rest are lackluster. They're chunky. You can't even see them on the eyelid. It's just, it's not a good time with this palette. And this raw energy shade, I cannot get to show up at all. Do you see that? It's like a dark purple shade nothing. It's horrible. Even this shade, like there's a couple shades in here that are really nice. They're really pretty, but 80% of this palette for me was not good. I did not like it. I did not like this formula from Urban Decay. And this had so much potential because it really is such a pretty color story. Two more palettes. So the next one, I wanted it to work so bad for me because the color story amazing the packaging amazing the whole idea behind this palette great this is the nomad tokyo palette it's so cute these colors are just so cute but you guys i don't know i don't know if i like the nomad formula in general because i've since tried another palette from them that i didn't like i have one more that i want to try to kind of seal that deal these colors just blend away if you do any type of intricate look that involves building of colors on top of other colors the color underneath is going to just disappear and it's really a shame because this color story incredible the shimmers are okay i just i kept trying and trying 
trying and trying again with this palette because I love that it's an indie brand. I love the story behind the brand. I love the color story of this palette. This palette in particular, I, I don't like the formula. All right, last eyeshadow palette. And this one's not a terrible formula. It's more so just a big disappointment to me because the other ones were so good. So first of all, I keep forgetting that this came out this year. This feels like it came out two years ago, but this is the ABH Norvina Volume 4 palette. And not everybody was gung-ho about these big palettes, but I have to admit, you guys, you see my pajama pants? <laughs> I have to admit, I really was excited for these palettes. I like the big palettes. I like how many colors. And up until the third one, I loved the formula. Honestly, I thought the formula was a little bit better than their original formula in some ways. And so when this one came out, I was really excited because this one was by far my favorite color story of these big guys. But all of a sudden, I don't like the formula anymore. It's not as good as the first three. The colors just don't blend out as well. They're a little bit lackluster. They're not quite as pigmented. And what I loved, loved, loved about the first three was you got really, really, really pigmented colors but they would blend out great. You don't get either of that with this. So overall, this palette was a big disappointment to me. I can absolutely make this work. I can absolutely come out with some pretty looks with this palette, but overall, I was disappointed in it. All right, you guys, there you have it. Those were the worst products of 2020 for me. I'm sure there's more that I forgot about. These were the ones that came to mind right away. Let me know what the products that you tried were that you didn't like this year. Remember, this is all completely personal. What doesn't work for me might work for you, but it always is fun to talk a little trash every now and then. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. On the contrary, if you do wanna leave on a more positive note, I do have my best makeup and best eyeshadow palettes of 2020 video up if you want to see those so make sure you guys subscribe and i will see you in the new year goodbye guys let's close up 2020